The holiday season is upon us, and as a Roblox game developer and YouTuber, I thought it's only fitting that I make a winter-themed game for the holidays. But there's one issue. It's only a couple days until Christmas, and I haven't even started. Well, time to make a game in two days. <laughs> So I want to make a snowball fighting game. And so I was doing some research and came across professional snowball fighting called Yuki Gasen. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. It's a Japanese word, so I apologize. And the professional snowball fighting looked very cool, but it involved a lot of dynamic movement and throwing mechanics, which I didn't really want to implement in such a short time. So instead, I took inspiration from the court design of Yuki Gasen and combined it with gameplay of something like Mindplex Paintball, if you've ever played that. And then I made a to-do list with all of the requirements for the game, and I started making it. First, I started by making some UI to show the amount of charge you have on your snowball throw, because, you know, priorities. Then, I hooked up the client's charging system up to the server and gave the server the power to throw the balls. And this system uses fast cast, which I have made videos on in the past, like with the gun and the shotgun, and I'll link it right now if you want to see them. Which basically allows me to simulate bullet physics without network ownership and without too much lag. Which, and it also gives me this nice debug view of the bullets as they go along, which is pretty cool. I then made a sphere called it a snowball, put a nice looking trail on it, and told FastCast to render it like a bullet, and that is our snowball throwing. Now, up to this point, the character has been throwing balls from their chest without any animations. Let's fix that. But not with that. That's a bit better. And now he can throw also. But of course, I messed it up spectacularly. And then after some more time, you can throw balls from your hand with decent animations. I'm not an animator. He's turned out looking sort of like throws. So cool, the player can throw snowballs, but the base plate is looking kind of ugly. Let's make a map. And just like that, the map is finished. Again, you can tell it's somewhat inspired by Yuki Gasen with a bunch of little short barricades littered around. And the map itself wasn't very balanced as we later figured out in testing, but you know, it's fine. It's a good enough map for me. And after I finished the map, I started adding some actual gameplay systems like the round system and intermission and stuff like that. And I also did a little bit of testing to make sure everything worked properly. The snowball hits were looking kind of bland, so I added particles. They added a lot to the game feel and made each throw feel a bit more juicy. Next, it was time to add player damage, because a fighting game without damage is, well... Okay, now we're good. Now it was time to playtest the game and actually play the game. So I first started by playing it with my friend, just as a one-on-one -on -one to make sure everything worked properly and all the, the game function, there wasn't too many major game breaking bugs. And we played around, it was pretty fun. We weren't really testing the gameplay, so but we still had a lot of fun pelting each other with snowballs. It was honestly pretty challenging to use the snowballs because of the projectile arc, because you have to like compensate for that and the game was almost unplayable without using shift lock so that was something interesting and then the next day day two 
I started off by fixing a couple of bugs and I added some satisfying sounds. Take a listen. So now it was time to formally test out the game. So I sent a couple messages on my official YouTube Discord server. The link is in the description. And I played with some of my subscribers. Overall, the game was like very playable. It worked as it intended, as I designed it, with very minimal issues. But it was not as fun as it could be. I did enjoy dishing out snowballs and close, close quarters combat but i was honestly hoping the game would be more strategic and require like more skill and like sniping people one issue was that jumping was very overpowered i definitely need to nerf it because people could just jump around and avoid snowballs whenever they wanted and avoid getting hit and just rush into your territory without getting hit and I also needed to increase the arc of the balls a little bit. People were complaining about that. Because originally I intended for you to be able to like lob the balls up a little to hit people behind cover. But that honestly wasn't really viable and no one would really use it that much. And increasing the arc would make the balls a little easier to throw. Because during this playtest it was extremely hard to hit people. Combine that with the fact that it took four hits to kill someone, and towards the end of the matches or rounds, the fights got a little grindy and a little more just chaotic. Which is fine, but I designed the map and designed the mechanic to be a little more strategic and require more skill. But these issues can be easily fixed, and I did fix them in the game, the final game. Because conveniently, I made the game in such a way where all of the constants, like the snowball damage, the snowball speed, and like the jump height, for example, were in like one module for me to change. One thing I am really satisfied with is the game feel of throwing the snowballs. Usually in my games, my mechanics are sound and the game somewhat works, but it just doesn't feel nice. I think I made the snowballs feel pretty nice when you throw them because the wind-up animation although it's not the best it still looks and feels sort of like you're throwing a ball and when the ball hits the ground it has a nice little puff sound it has nice particles and then when you hit someone else you get a nice satisfying like little ding sound and when you kill someone you get a like more fleshed out version of that sound so it gives the player feedback and also gives them satisfaction when they get hit which I think is pretty cool. But honestly, for only taking a little over a day, the game was an astounding success, at least for me, and people seem to enjoy it for the most part. It's definitely not a front pager, but it did help me grow as a game developer, and it gave me some confidence knowing that I can tell I can set a game, set a deadline in a day, and make a product that actually works, and I think that's pretty cool. So this project will be open source with both the GitHub repository and the Roblox project linked in the description and completely free to copy to like republish if you want to improve the game, make it better, and then publish it on your own and do whatever you want with it. But keep in mind, I did make this game in a day, so not all of the choices were smart and don't, don't treat it as Bible, that's for sure. So let's just go over some of the quick details in case you're interested. So this project was created using Ro Roho. I have a video on that if you're interested. And so that's why I'm in VS Code. I'm also using Wally, -E, which Wally -E is pretty new. It's a package manager for Roblox, so I can put all my package dependencies in this dependencies section, and I can include it in my project pretty easily. So if I take a look at the script, for example, you can see I can get all of these packages by getting a package in replicated storage and putting it all there. And I also have my default project JSON for Roho. It's a basic setup. It's honestly the default that comes with it. One thing to note is if you ever need to change some aspect of the gameplay, you can usually find all the constants and just the constants in the shared folder. And the GUIs are in the game were not created with Roact, so they are in the actual Roblox game itself, in case you're wondering. 
So if you want to play around with those, just go there. And this project should be able to sync out of the box with Roblox Studio as long as you install all of the Wally dependencies by using Wally install. And if you're interested, I will make a video on working with Wally in the future. But other than that, the game uses Knit, which is a good framework for client server communication. And it has a couple services, a couple controllers, and a couple components using this is formerly part of Knit, but now it's a separate package. And this allows you to tag something using collection service, and a class is attached to it. That was really, really helpful. And then also, in regards with saving data and data stores, the game saves player kills in an ordered data store, so it would be pretty simple to make a leaderboard if you ever wanted to. So keep that in mind. But that's basically it for the technical details. There is a couple comments and a couple places, so you can check that out if you want. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. We are so close to 5,000 subscribers. It would be a great Christmas present if I could get there. But other than that, I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. See ya.